I'm Ellen Beth Levitt at the PRSA International Conference in Philadelphia. We heard a really interesting presentation here from Jerry Berger from Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston about the whole experience following the Boston Marathon bombings. And you got quite a few patients from that incident, didn't you? We got 24 patients and then both suspects, which made for a very interesting uh, time of it um, because we had to deal with the regular media crush uh, that surrounded the bombing itself and then having the both the um, patient who died and then the one who uh, was uh, in-house for about a week made for um, quite an interesting time. And when you say the patient who died, you're talking about one of the suspects. Right. One of the brothers uh, who, uh, who arrived in our emergency department at about 1.20 in the morning, and um, his brother, alive, uh, arrived um, maybe 15, 16 hours later. How big is your media relations staff, and how were you able to cope with this? Because I would imagine that even if we have a huge staff, it would be a very challenging situation with thousands of media calls. I have a team of three, including myself, and yeah, it was quite a challenge. Um, we coped the best we could. I mean, we had, got inundated with a lot of calls. We had um, satellite uh, trucks on campus, and we just managed to cope as best as we can. How often did you give updates on the conditions of all the 24 patients? We tried to do it twice a day. Um, the problem in running a medical center and trying to uh, assist the media is uh, the doctors who are responsible for assigning uh, conditions um, also have to care for those patients. So sometimes we had a little bit of problem getting them out timely, but we did it twice a day. Did you have some tricky situations with media trying to get around you and your staff in order to interview patients or members of their family? We had several challenging situations where um, you had differences between sometimes members of the family about how much attention they wanted and one part of the family would be looking to get attention and the other was not and it made for some interesting situations. In one case I had to tell a network that they couldn't do a story because they tried to get around us not once but twice. And how did that work out? Ironically, when I finally met the medical editor a few months later, he thanked me for saying no because he said that was the only way his team was ever going to get the idea of what they did was wrong. Right. They need to learn that hospitals operate in a certain way to protect privacy of patients and uh, sometimes they don't realize that we don't have all the flexibility to help them out as much as they would like us to. My first obligation is to the patient. A very close second is the media, but the, the patient's always going to win. What are some of the lessons learned from that extraordinary experience that you went through? We realized in hindsight we didn't make enough use of social media. We uh, also real at the Paradoxically, the other side is that paper is very much alive and well because technology um, has advanced, but it's still a little difficult to get onto computer systems using handheld uh, phones or, or tablets. And so you, you need paper, but you also need to acknowledge uh, the power of, uh, of social media and its ability to tell your story. Thank you very much. I'm Ellen Beth Levitt with Jerry Berger. And you can hear really interesting presentations like this that are relevant to those of us who work in healthcare related institutions at the PRSA Health Academy Spring Conference, which will be in DC this May. So we hope you'll join us.